Welcome to Monday Coffee. This is your jolt of hope for the week. I've been thinking a lot about our kind of discourse through politics and everything. Uh, last two weeks I've talked a little bit about that, but I've also seen this in our political discourse and faith discourse for quite a while now, not just recently, but for a long time. And one of the things is people are always questioning if somebody is uh, Christian or not. Are they truly Christian? And a lot of people end up saying, well, we can't truly know that. That's between them and God. Only God knows their heart, which is true. But some ways it's also a cop out because scripture gives us plenty of ideas of what it means to have faith and how to see that. And it's the age old question. And people argue about this for, for all of history. That are we saved by faith or by works? And ultimately what the Bible points us towards is that we are saved by faith, but our works should show our faith. And James says, our, our, without works, our faith is dead. So one of the ways I want to point this to us, uh, help us point towards this is Matthew 15, 8. It says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. So there is a way that God is looking at our hearts. We can say all the stuff we want. We can talk the right way. We can talk Christianese. We can talk in the ways that make us sound like good and loyal Christians. But if our hearts are not there, it's just empty. And our hearts is what's going to help us uh, fight for the things that God fights for. To care for those, to show love and compassion to others, to care for those along uh, the fringes of society. For us to have self-sacrifice in order to make other people's lives better. Because that's what Jesus did. And here's what Jesus said in terms of how do you know somebody has faith. It's tree and fruit from Matthew seven fifteen through 20. It says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you dressed like sheep, but inside they are vicious wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do people get bunches of grapes from their weeds, or do they get figs from their thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, and every rotten tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a rotten tree can't produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, you will know them by their fruit." And so many people can produce fruit, but is it rotten or is it fresh fruit? Is it good fruit, bad fruit? And look around for the people who you look up to and respect, our leaders, that is their fruit good? Is it making people more compassionate and compelling towards Christ and Christ's life and witness to the world? Or is it driving some way into more a tribalism that is not making people more open and compassionate and self-sacrificial? So then what is that fruit? And in Galatians 5, through 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So ultimately, these are the things that show the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of our faith. If these things are not in us or the people that we follow, then all it is is chaos and anger and hatred. So this week, may you seek out the good fruits, the fruits of the Spirit in your own life. May you find that the people that you care for and follow also have these same fruits, because this is what is going to expand the kingdom of God and the witness of the church in the world. Have a great week.